folks, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. So you can get better results from your practice if you learn how to do it well. One great way to do that is to find the right level of challenge, to always be working in this Goldilocks zone between too hard, not too hard, not too easy. And so sometimes it's great to take a piece that's already a bit of a challenge and make it a little more challenging to help you learn it more deeply. So the scientific cognitive science term for this is desirable difficulties. Another way to look at it is you learn to work at your edge. And so in this lesson, I'm going to give you a bunch of great practice ideas to help you do this. So take out your fiddle and you can do what we're going to do today on whatever tune you're working on or set of tunes. You may want to take a moment and if you know parts that are kind of hard that you want to improve, then write them down right, right now. Pause the video, write them down. Maybe you already know that. And th that way we will focus on using the stuff we'll do today on those parts. I have another lesson that helps you discover the hard parts in a tune. It's called, I think, Practice the Hard Parts. It's a lesson on deliberate practice, which is basically what we're doing today in a different form. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, I'm picking a Shokin Farewell, and I'm picking the second quarter of the A part. So I'm gonna practice this in a few different ways to help me improve my technique on it. Another thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna help me remember it by practicing in all these different ways, my retrieval of it will be better. So the very first challenge that I'll present or desirable difficulty will be to simply play it with a metronome at a steady beat. We're not gonna do it fat, too fast or slow, just a good baseline tempo, but you will find that once you set something to a metronome, it's a little bit more challenging than you thought. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna start at 75 beats per minute. So that'll be. Loop it. And so on. So you may find, especially if you're not used to using a metronome, that when you first use it, you you will it'll seem like the metronome is going faster if it's too hard for you. And if the piece is a little easy for you, you may be pushing go go, and you may, the metronome may actually sound slow. It's very psychedelic and weird. But the important thing is that you just stick to the tempo as much as possible to key in on that tempo. And you may want to even pause. Let's just do this. You may want to pause from practicing with it and just listen to it and continuously resync your mind with the beat. So maybe I, I do once with it. And so I'm suggesting that because a lot of times when beginners to, to using a metronome, when beginning students use it, they end up just playing not in sync with it at all. And it's, it's because it's hard and because you really have to constantly reconnect your mind to the metronome, to the beat. Okay, so there's that. If you just did that alone with different things, uh, challenging things, I think you would find it to be really challenging and really helpful. And one other note before we move on, and this applies to everything we'll do today, if the piece you're working is just too hard to do with play at a steady tempo or another practice variation, then make it easier somehow. So, so we're, we're, again, we're trying to find the, the Goldilocks zone between too hard and too easy, the zone where you're perfectly engaged. So you're, you'll optimize your practice and your learning speed, but it'll also be more interesting and fun. So if that was really too hard for you, maybe you need to do it in slower tempo, or maybe you just need to pick a smaller piece to practice. Maybe just practice. So 
So you just be kind to yourself and also be humble. I mean, a lot of times we think, I got this, I can do it. But you really need to simplify it. I do this all the time. And then I'm just like, yeah, and I try to do it. I always play too fast. Even though I'm always saying to students, slow down, I still do it. So it's a matter of just kind of constantly remembering and paying attention to that. Okay, so let's move on. The next point is to change the tempo to find your fastest tempo and the slowest tempo. So a lot of students, when they use a metronome, they're looking for their fastest tempo. So we'll start there. That's the more common thing to do. So when you get to your fastest tempo, whatever that is, it will be more physically challenging. And to foreshadow what's coming next, your slowest tempo is not as challenging physically. It's all mentally challenging. Okay, so let's stick to the fastest tempo. I'm going to just fast forward. I, I, I found earlier that, that around 140, 150 is a good fast tempo for this, for me. So without taking you, it would take a long time for me to incrementally go from 75 to 150. And so I don't want to bore you in this video, but just know that it's a very incremental process. You might bump it up five BPMs at a time. And then when you get closer to your limit, you really want to work in single BPMs. Maybe just, you know, when I get close to 150, maybe I'm going 140, 141, 142, and each day I'm going one faster or something like that. Okay, so that's our fastest tempo. Now let's try our slowest tempo. So I'm gonna bring it down to 50. Let's even go crazier, let's go to like 40. It's gonna be really weird. It's gonna be hard mentally because the tune won't sound the same. Three. and so on. So it does sound very awkward. It's like a whole nother melody. But if you can do this, your fast playing will get better, which is kind of the Jedi Knight trick to playing fast, is to play very slowly with a metronome. Then you're, you will be so on top of that melody. It'll be so in your head that you'll be able to do it well. Let's move on. I have a few other fun ideas for you guys. So the next, is to take this piece and remove the rhythm, flatten the rhythm, so that each note is the same length, okay? So, what I mean by that, instead of doing long, each note will, will turn, and turn into quarter notes, so like, Okay, so this is also kind of weird, but because it's such a different way of hearing the tune, a different context, you're going to get a lot better at it. It'll help you work out your left hand. And what we're doing here and in this whole lesson is that you're being the teacher. In order to do that, you need to make up exercises. All right, so the next fun practice challenge I'll throw you away is to take that flattened rhythm and just add different other rhythms you know to it. So like hoe down, long, short, short. And so on, triplets. You could add all kinds of other variations. You could add textures, melodic variations, Irish variations, even plucking.
Another idea you can use with the flattened rhythm we did is chaining the notes. So looking at the flattened rhythm, we'll just play the first note, then the first two notes, first three notes. And so on. So this is, I really love this one, and it's a very creative practice as well. It will help you to improvise because you're gonna see that there's melodies within melodies, and it will help you later to make your own melodies or to reinvent tunes and create your own variations. So let's do one last main kind of variation, and then we're gonna integrate this piece back into the tune. So now what we're gonna do is the opposite of flattening the rhythm. We're gonna take the original piece that we're working on. And instead of extracting the, the pitch, the pitches, we're gonna extract the rhythm. So we're gonna just play that rhythm on an open string. Join, join in with me if you like. Once you get that, and this is hard too, you may want to start with a smaller piece or a simpler tune when you first do this rhythm extraction idea. It sounds so nerdy, doesn't it? Rhythm extraction. <laughs> um, so yeah, you may, it's, it's very challenging, but I, I think it's very good. It'll really help your rhythm, and, and you'll find that certain rhythms are used over and over again once you start extracting it. So there's a great practice you can do. You can, you can take the original piece and then the extracted rhythm and make a bigger exercise, like. And the rhythm extract. And then the original, and keep cycling like that. All right, so finally, what we're gonna do is integrate. We're gonna take the piece we just did and, and take the original and just try to play it back in the tune just to see where it's at. So maybe just play the entire A part of a Shokan Farewell. And so in that way, we weave it back in and make sure that we're, we're able to perform it in the context of the whole piece. And you may need to actually work on the transitions into and out of it. Maybe, maybe not. But, if, but pay attention to that. And I have a whole, uh, in the, other, the lesson on deliberate practice I did, I talk about how to practice transitions for things. So that's the main gist of this lesson. The, again, this process is called desirable difficulties. That's the official cognitive science term. And I like to call it working at your edge or finding the right level of challenge. And so this applies to any music student anywhere and probably any skill you're learning. There's, there's kind of a Goldilocks zone in which you're really, where you want to be challenged, you want to be making mistakes but then eventually getting over those mistakes. And when you're in that zone, it's like playing the best video game ever. There's a, you enter a state of flow where the practice becomes really interesting because you're like sometimes getting it right, sometimes you're not, and it, it will propel you forward and actually motivate you, which is kind of the hidden benefit. So not only does it improve your skills, but it will motivate you to play again tomorrow. Anyway, <laughs> Hope this was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't too nerdy and, and or scientific. Uh, let me know your questions. I love hearing your questions. It, it really, when I, the more I interact with you and other students, the better I get at finding out how to teach you online. So anyway, thanks for watching Fiddlehead. See you next time. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for watching the video club. Excellent.
And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.